in this video we are going to be making barium sulfide. Um, the process is the same basic process that I use to make sodium sulfide, but um, I'm going to show the entire thing starting from making the ferrous sulfide. I know this is a very common reaction, but I mean, it's kind of chem porn, and I figured I would just throw it in for the hell of it. But um, I was reading an inorganic laboratory preparations um, in one of the preps on there that it was talking about making up barium sulfide, and what I saw made me question whether or not I've actually been making alkali sulfides or the hydrosulfides. Um, because this prep has you bubble hydrogen sulfide gas through a hot suspension of, or solution rather, of barium hydroxide octahydrate. And then um, once the solution is saturated with hydrogen sulfide, and has a pH of 8, it said at least 8, and the smell has to persist even after shaking it up. I don't know, you know, inorganic laboratory preparations is an old textbook, I have no idea, I'll just stir it with a stir bar like I always do. Um, but, I mean, and then it says to um, add an equal weight of barium hydroxide to that solution, and that gives normal barium sulfide. And see, in that last part is what I haven't done, and so maybe that potassium sulfide I just made is actually potassium hydrosulfide. I mean, I don't know. I guess I can, like, check the pH of it or something to try to find out. But um, we're, we're going to do this prep and um, follow it exactly like the textbook says to see if we can't create barium sulfide. The point of this, what I want this for, um, is because with this, I can hopefully prepare barium cyanide. Um, I'm also going to do a video where I show an improved prep of the um, sodium potassium cyanide. Um, it, it was uh, actually one of the mods on Discord, David, tried this, and he was able to get much better yields. So I really want to try his methods and see if I can't, you know, get a better yield of the cyanide. And hopefully it will separate out that godforsaken ferrocyanide contamination um, without me having to actually go all the way and set up a hydrogen cyanide generator to bubble hydrogen cyanide gas through an alkaline solution. As you might imagine, that is my last choice because I do not have a respirator that would protect me. I, I know, do it outside on a windy day, yeah, but I mean, as I have seen like with this, like, you know, just trying to do it with um, hydrogen sulfide. Um, you, you will catch, the wind must break up the cloud coming off of it into little chunks, and sometimes they blow away, and sometimes they don't. Um, and that kind of makes me concerned. I mean, if you can smell hydrogen sulfide, I'm going to use the same setup, well, theoretically, to make, like, you know, potassium cyanide or something, or barium cyanide. And it stands to reason, you know, that I would breathe a fair amount of HCN, and I mean... How much HCN kills you over what span of time? You know, these are the things I don't have the answers to. And unfortunately, respirators that actually work with a beard like mine are, are extremely hard to come by. And apparently, it's like I keep doing internet searches for these things and I keep really not finding anything. It's like you can't be telling me. That, you know, a planet with, like, what, almost four billion men on it, nobody has designed a fucking gas mask that works with a big-ass beard. It is so infuriating. And especially because, like, I have an idea of how you could come up with something that probably would work pretty well. Um, I mean, it just amazes me that nobody has created such a thing. It's just weird. Anyway, um, so yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to bypass a lot of problems here. Um, no matter what, the way that the barium sulfide, to get off the tangents here, helps me make barium cyanide is because I can take the pure 
um, sodium potassium cyanide, we hope pure, um, using David's method, and then react that with zinc acetate to precipitate out zinc cyanide. Um, the zinc cyanide, yeah, the zinc cyanide is then reacted with um, barium sulfide in order to precipitate out um, zinc sulfide, leaving barium cyanide in solution. Um, so, I mean, in theory, hopefully, we could produce that. And then with barium cyanide, it is going to be so... Much, even if we only get a solution of this shit, we, you know, where we have a known concentration of it, that's fine. Just something so I can do some goddamn stoichiometry with it. Um, and I mean, I can use it to make not only all kinds of other cyanides, but cyanide complexes. Um, and if everything works, this might also help a lot with that um, octocyanomolybdate prep. Because I'm absolutely not going to be defeated by that shit, boy. I, let me tell you. Um... I've got decolorizing carbon on the, you know, charcoal on the way, um, you know, fucking lab grade shit, and maybe that will do with it. You know, maybe that'll do it. Okay, everybody, so we have our standard setup here for generating hydrogen sulfide. Um, on the left, you can see up in the addition flat funnel, we have, um, uh, I don't know, it's about 200 or so mils maybe about 250, of uh, sulfuric acid that's roughly 8 molar, something close to that. In the actual flask, there is ferrous sulfide, plus all of the um, liquid that was left over from where I made the potassium sulfide um, that I cr basically crystallized the potassium sulfide from. So it is the filtrate from that. I've, I've just started saving that kind of stuff to toss into the hydrogen sulfide generator later is the liquid that the ferrous sulfide is immersed in. Tends to give pretty good results. On the right, we have our gas wash bottle. There is 40 grams of barium hydroxide in this. Closer here. You can see it there. Um, it's sitting in the crystallizing dish, which has hot water in it, since it, according to the prep, it needs to be in hot water. Um, not all of the barium hydroxide is going to dissolve because some of it is barium carbonate. But hopefully, the hydrogen sulfide, which is an acid, will react with that and it'll all be fine in the end. Um, I have some brand new barium hydroxide that I just got for the next step, so hopefully that helps some. So, okie dokie, here we go. Okay, so not only is there this weird intractable precipitate that will not go away, it's starting to turn kind of green, like a grayish green. I have no idea what in the world is happening here. I don't know, man. It, it, it could be maybe some kind of polysulfide. That's the only thing I could think. Um, I'm honestly not sure what the hell it's doing. But we're going to keep on going through the motions and we'll, we'll see what we get here. Okay, people, here is our mystery compound. I am not sure what it is. Um, I'm really actually kind of perplexed as to what that could be. But no matter, I mean, just going by the volume of it, uh, I mean, obviously most of the barium hydroxide reacted to form barium sulfide. At least I assume that it did. So, um... What I'm going to do is I am going to let this settle and then I'm going to filter it off and then I will start boiling it down probably tomorrow morning. So I'll come back when I'm ready to do that. Okay, peeps. So as usual, it's the morning, which means that the sun is shining on the bench and making things hard to film. But anyway, this is our solution. I only just now put it on to start stirring and heating. Um, so... 
I filtered out all of that green crap by filtering everything through a tight plug of glass wool. Normally, there, some of the particles were very fine. Normally, I would have centrifuged it, but I still haven't been able to get a new centrifuge yet. So, um, I just made a very tight plug of glass wool and a long neck funnel and filtered it through that. And that did surprisingly well. I was actually really surprised that it did. I mean, first time, no issues, um, right from the very beginning. So that was cool. Um, I mean, and as I saw, like, like you can, I don't know if you can see it, but you can, it's there. There are little spots where the liquid is drying and it is producing a whitish solid. That's awesome. There were a few little crystals floating on the surface this morning. Not really sure what the hell is up with that. Um, but I'm going to evaporate it down. I, I mean, according to the textbook, what I will get is barium hydrosulfide. But, I mean, I don't know how much barium salt hydroxide to add to this to... Um, I, mean, I guess I can try to guesstimate it with the pH and try to figure out, you know, what I could add to this to make it work. But... I'm a little nervous about adding, um, I mean, that barium carbonate was an absolute bitch. But, on the other hand, if I want to use this to make barium cyanide, it, it has to be the normal barium sulfide. It can't be barium hydrosulfide, because that just doesn't seem like that's going to work out well. You're going to have that other proton there. It might hook up with cyanide ion. You know, cyanide's a fairly strong base. I don't know. That just doesn't seem like a wise move. So, anyway, the start of... Oh, God, it's already stinks to high heaven. Um, I saturated the shit out of this with hydrogen sulfide gas. <laughs> I'm sure my neighbors love me. Anyway, I'm going to let this evaporate down, um, and we will see what happens, man. We're just going to go with it. I mean, so far, so good. At least it appears to be. It's the right color. That's good, I guess. Anyway, I'll come back when there's something else to report. Okay, so I decided to take a chance and just keep going forward as the textbook described. I was not really sure what to do. After I'd been evaporating this down for a little while, I test the pH, and the pH is like 10. It, I, I don't know if that's just a consequence of me evaporating it down. I know sulfides are highly alkaline. I mean, I kind of expect that. But if it's the hydrosulfide, would the pH be that high? I don't know. But, um, I decided to just say fuck it and just proceed. So I went ahead and I added another, since we started with 40 grams of barium hydroxide, um, and the textbook has you use equal weights, I decided to go ahead and add in another 30 grams. That accounts for carbonate, impurity, you know, anything like that. It shouldn't completely remove all hydrosulfide if there is any there. Um, I do have to say that, you know, this way, I know it looks cloudy now and there's a bug that flew into it because of course there is. I'm about to filter it through a tight plug of glass wool. So, again, that, that, that seems to be working well to get tiny particles out on the first go. Um, but it, it turned a kind of lighter yellow. I tested it in the test tube first, and I saw the same thing. I don't know if it's dilution. I mean, the barium hydroxide solution I added was pretty strong. It was 30 grams of barium hydroxide and um, about 100 mils of boiling water. I don't know. I mean, maybe this is good. I found an alternate prep for barium sulfide. It looks a little more ugly. Um, it basically involved... Although... If it worked, it would be a marvelous way to recycle barium sulfate instead of just throwing it away, which is what I normally do. I don't know, just dump it out. I mean, it's not toxic. Um, it, it, it could, if this worked, it could allow us to actually use that barium again by converting it to barium sulfide. Um, I mean, it, it involves cooking the barium sulfate with carbon uh the first person i think the person who discovered um barium sulfide did it with flour and charcoal and then subsequent preps like the mod way it's pre um, prepped today is done with barium sulfate and coke as in the fuel which is basically just very high carbon content fuel um and apparently that gives you a better yield, but it also produces carbon monoxide as a byproduct. 
it looks like. Not that I really care. Carbon monoxide's not really a problem out here. Anyway, um, I am going to filter this. I'm just waiting on it to heat up a little bit. Oh, well, I guess it helps if I fucking turn that on, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I just now noticed that. So, after it heats up, I will filter it, and we'll take a look at it, and then we'll evaporate it down, and we'll see what we get. I guess if, if, if I fucked up, and there is excess barium hydroxide in there, we'll see it because it will continually produce barium carbonate. There'll be no, no stopping it. So, at least I think. So, I don't know. Maybe we can use that as an indicator of whether or not we just fucked up or not. Okay, people, look at this shit, man. Look, look, it fucking worked. Holy fuck, it worked. Well, shit. Look at that. Look at that. It's crystallizing out all over the goddamn place. Yay! Oh my god, that was such a pain in the ass. Is it actually showing up? Can you guys see it? Ah, okay, all right. Give me a second, I'll be right back. I don't know about you, new camera. You kinda, you kinda being a pain in the ass here. All right, let's see. Look at that shit. Look at that. That is far too much stuff to be barium carbonate, my friends. Um, barium sulfide is pretty darn soluble at high temps, but at low temps, I think it's close to like only two and a half grams dissolved per 100 mils. So it is pretty easy to get it to crystallize out. And the fact that it's showing that kind of behavior just reaffirms that yes success this is it this is so great oh i am so happy um all i'm gonna do now is just filter it out and press it dry and bottle it um yeah yeah so that's so fucking great man so um i i guess i'll just go ahead and wrap it up here look at that shit it is beautiful stinky but beautiful so if you like that video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, well, whatever. Subscribe, comment, share the video, donate a few bucks if you want to see me bang my head against more walls and, and eventually succeed. And until the next one, y'all, I will see you later. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so excited it fucking worked. Yes, days of work were not wasted.